Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we are going to be looking over problems that involve linear functions that are similar to those that you will see on a TSI or TSIA2 math placement exam. So if you have never heard of this test, the TSIA2 math test is going to be a test that you will take if you're going into any Texas college or university and you don't qualify for exempting out of it. There are different ways how you can exempt out of this test. For example, if you score high enough on your SAT, you won't have to take this. Um, but if you don't qualify for an exemption, colleges will use your score on this test to determine what math class to place you in in your freshman year. So that's just a little information about this test. We'll talk more about this test later in the year. Uh, when it gets a little closer to the time that you'll take it. But I want to start introducing you to the types of problems that you can expect to see on this test. And since we've already gone over linear functions um, pretty in-depth, uh, we're going to only focus on those types of problems uh, in this lesson. Later down the line, we'll get uh, into other types of problems you might see. But for today, we're just looking at the ones that have to do with linear functions. So let's start uh, with the first problem. Number three says, last year a bakery sold W loaves of bread. This year the bakery sold three more than twice the number of loaves of bread it sold last year. If next year the bakery plans on selling twice the number of loaves of bread sold this year, how many loaves of bread does the bakery expect to sell next year? Okay, so last year we sold W loaves of bread. So last year, W loaves of bread. And then this year, I'm going to keep track of this as I read it. This year, the bakery sold three more than twice the number of loaves of bread sold last year. So if it was twice the number of bread, uh, loaves of bread as last year, it'd be 2W. But it does say three more than twice the number of loaves of bread. The three more than is going to be a plus three. Okay, so that, that's the expression that will represent how many loaves of bread we sold this year. And then finally, we're talking about next year. So next year, the bakery plans on selling twice the, uh, twice the number of loaves of bread that it sold this year. We already know how many loaves of bread it sold this year, which is 2W plus 3. So next year, it should be twice that. Okay, so twice that would be like two times um, this year, whatever we got for this year. Now, this year, we already know how many we had, right? It was uh, 2W plus 3. So instead of just writing this year, I'm going to write 2W plus 3. And that's that many loaves of bread. So um, this is going to be our answer. But you, as you can see, none of the answer choices look like this. So we do have to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation here. Specifically, we're going to distribute the 2. okay? And that means we're going to multiply 2 by both 2w and 3. So 2 times 2w is going to be 4w. And then 2 times 3 is 6. This is going to give us the simplified form of the expression that's so this many loaves of bread. So 4w plus 6 is our answer, and we can see that that's answer choice D. Number 4 says, if 7p minus 4 equals 8, then what is the value of p? So here we're just solving a linear equation. We have 7p minus 4 equals 8. And uh, there's no distributive property to do here, no like terms to combine. So we're just going to move on to our properties of equality. The first property of equality that we're going to use is going to be the property of addition. We're going to add 4 to both sides to get rid of that minus 4 on the left-hand side. Ultimately, what we're trying to do here is isolate P. So any numbers that we see on the same side of the equation as P need to be dealt with. Right, we need to get rid of this minus 4. So to, bound, to, to get rid of this minus 4, we're going to add 4. And the, our addition property of equality says that if we do uh, add something to one side, we have to do it to the other. 
Okay, so after I add 4 to both sides, it's going to give me 7 times P equals 12. Is that right? Yeah, uh, 8 plus 4 is 12. Good. And then so we have 7 times P. So the way that we're going to get rid of that 7 is we want to do the opposite operation. Um, you know, if this is 7 times P, we want to divide both sides by 7 to get rid of that 7 on the left-hand side. So after we divide both sides by 7, that's going to give us P uh, equals uh, 12 sevenths. Can't really reduce that, so that's just going to be our answer. Um, and it looks like we do have that as an answer choice. So the correct answer for number 4, it looks like it's going to be C. Number nine says, if 5C minus 2 equals 3C, then what does 24C equal? All right, well, if 5C minus 2 equals 3C, let's solve this for C and then see what our answer is. Okay, so we're going to subtract 5C from both sides here. Do my work here, minus 5C on both sides. Uh, I'm trying to isolate C. So 3C minus 5C is going to be negative 2C. So we get negative 2 equals negative 2C. And if I divide both sides by negative 2, get C by itself. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. This tells me that C equals 1. Now, this is asking, what is 24C? Well, 24 times 1 is just 24. So our answer is D. Number 10 says, in the xy plane, the slope of the line y equals mx minus 4 is less than the slope of the line y equals x minus 4. Which of the following must be true about m? Okay, so if you have an equation that's in this format, this mx plus b format, the slope is going to be the number that is the coefficient of x. It's going to be the m. This is the slope. Now, for the uh, equation that's given, y equals x minus 4. If you do not see a number in front of the x, there is an assumed 1 here. So if it's saying that mx minus 4 has a slope that's smaller or less than the slope of this, that means that this slope, this m value, must be smaller than 1. And so our answer is C. There's really not much more to it. Um, you just have to understand, I guess, what it's asking for. Um, and also have a good understanding of this, this slope-intercept form of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. Number 14 says, if n is the least of two consecutive odd integers, which of the following represents the sum of the two integers? So odd integers are going to be numbers that are whole numbers that are not divisible by 2. So we're talking numbers like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Really, it's every other number, okay, starting with 1. So um, if the smaller number is n, so the smaller number is n, then the Next consecutive integer, and consecutive means if you have a list of things, the, the, um, if two items in that list are consecutive, that means they follow one after the next. So if I'm saying the next consecutive on integer, if the smallest one is, say, 7, the next one would be 9. Okay? But the key point is that the next number, number is going to be 2 more than the previous number. So the next number is going to be n plus 1. I'm sorry, wow, plus 2. Okay, like, so if the first one's 3, the next one would be 5. If one is 11, the next one's going to be 13, and so on. So it says, which of the following represents the sum of the two integers? So sum indicates that we want to add these two things together. So I have n plus this n plus 2. And when I combine my like terms, which is just the n's, I'm going to get 2n plus 2, and that's our answer. So we have our answer choice right here, letter D. And that's it for number 14. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a nice day.